I'm here to talk about making hall measurements on low mobility materials like uh, materials that are used in solar cells and talk about why they are so hard to do and maybe some methods that can allow us to to improve the measurement of uh, low mobility materials. So we're going to start re with the review of the DC field hall measurements, which is a standard hall measurements that have been done for years. Uh, we're going to propose an AC field method to uh, improve the, the uh, measurement. And one of the big challenges is what is the sign of the hall voltage, which of course is the sign of the carrier. Uh, it's not unusual to do a hall measurement on a low, mo low mobility material and get p-type one measurement and do it again and get n-type and, and you can get you don't know the sign of the hall voltage so we'll spend a little time talking about that we'll do some comparisons and then i'll show some measurements and some real materials okay so the hall effect's been around over a hundred years well known effect uh, in, in a one-dimensional material if I have a current flowing this way and I apply a magnetic field perpendicular to the current flow then the carriers in the material start going on curved paths because of the Lorentz force so those carriers hit the edge where they can't they can't move and so they build up there and they build a voltage across the the, the edge of the of the uh, material and that's the hall voltage and of course there's a voltage across the length which is just the the uh, normal resistance so you have a, a resistivity in this direction and you have a component of resistivity in this direction which is the Hall coefficient times the magnetic field so in the simplest model that you can make of a semiconductor the, the resistivity is one over the density times the charged electron times the mobility the Hall coefficient is one over NE and so you measure the mobility by measuring both the resistivity and Hall coefficient and taking the, re the ratio. So in the simplest model you think of, you say the Hall voltage is the Hall coefficient times the current times the V field. This is the two-dimensional uh, representation of the, of the material without uh, the thickness. So the Hall voltage is, uh, the Hall coefficient is one over N ND. And the mobility doesn't appear in here anywhere. So why, why, is, why is low mobility material hard when the Hall coefficient hard voltage don't depend on the mo mobility? Well, th the problem is when the, when the mobilities get to be about less than 10, there's, there's difficulty in measuring it with a DC effect because you have, you have other voltages that, that you measure besides the the Hall voltage. That is at zero field, you don't measure zero volts. And there are two major sources of those. One are thermoelectric voltages that, that's independent of the current. It's just the voltage that develops because you have a junction between two different materials. And then there's a misalignment voltage okay, that depends on the resistivity and contact configuration of the sample and, and is, is proportional to the resistivity in the current and some factor alpha that depends on the geometry. So what you really measure is the Hall voltage plus this misaligned voltage plus the, the, t, the thermoelectric voltage. And if I, if I write RH as, as rho times mu, then I can factor out this rho I term, and, and we see we get a term here, mu B plus alpha. So this term here, the thermoelectric, can be removed by doing current reversal. It's very classical method for doing that. If I do a measurement at plus current and a measurement at minus current and subtract them, this term falls out. And normally this term is small, and so that doesn't present any problem. But you need to compare mu b to alpha, because the, the normal way in a DC measurement to, to remove this term is to measure at positive field and negative field and subtract them. But if mu b is, is small compared to alpha, then you're subtracting two big numbers to, to get a small number. So the question is, how big can alpha be? If, if I had a perfectly rectangular Van der Paul sample with point contacts on the, on the uh, current, on the edges, alpha would be zero. There, there would be no voltage by symmetry. Okay, so alpha is a measure of, of the 
how much your sample deviates from perfect symmetry. And the case we, I analyzed here is just a case where instead of having a perfect square, I have a s sample that's slightly rectangular. Okay, so L and W aren't equal. If w and L are equal, alpha is equal to zero. If, if it's just 1% uh, different, then alpha is equal to 0.014. And then it's, if it's 10% difference, it's 0.14. And if it's 50% difference, if it's a long, thin rectangle, then it's 1.11. Then it's, uh, uh, it's alpha can get quite big. So if I say, all right, I'm going to do my measurement in a, in a one Tesla magnetic field. So, so B equals 1. What's, what mu corresponds to, to this, to this alpha? alpha? And, and so you can calculate a mu. And you have to remember the factor of 10,000 because, because B is in, in, is in SI units. And then you convert it to the more common square centimeters per volt second. And so even if the difference is is less than, is at 1% for mobilities less than 140, the offset the misalignment voltage is going to be bigger than the Hall voltage. And, and so you can see very quickly that, that as, as your mobility gets smaller, the misalignment voltage will be bigger than your offset voltage, and that's ultimately why the, it's a hard measurement to do. So we, the thermoelectric voltage we remove using current reversals, the misalignment voltage is removed using field reversals, but there will be large errors if the offset is large compared to the Hall voltage. And there, there also can be non-uniformity effects in the sample, and, and they can be uh, removed by doing what's called geometry averaging, where you interchange the current meter and source meter. And I'm not going to talk about that, that type of averaging uh, anymore in this talk. All right, but there's another problem. These misalignment and thermoelectric voltages can change with temperature and, and time. Here is a plot of time versus a Hall voltage for a fixed current in, in a sample with the magnetic field going up and down. So this big voltage here, seven, I believe it's, yeah, seven tenths of a volt negative, uh -huh, isn't the Hall voltage, it's the offset voltage. See those little wiggles on it? That's the Hall voltage. If we rescale it, you see, there's what we're really trying to measure. We're trying to measure the, this, this little amplitude here and, and press, setting on back of that 7 tenths of a, of a volt. And even worse, over a 1,000 seconds, about 17 minutes, it changes. The, the, that 7 tenths of a volt has changed by, by nearly the amplitude of the, of the Hall voltage. It changes mostly because of the, the uh, temperature of the sample slowly drifts around and it changes the resistivity and that, that's what's causing this drift. So, so it's, this, it's not uncommon to see Hall measurements that look like this when you look at them over time. So that, that's another problem, that, that, that even with the offset voltage being big, it changes and, and small changes in the Hall in the offset would be interpreted in a field reversal measurement as a Hall voltage because you would say maybe if I measured the positive field here and the negative field not to down here, I would subtract these two numbers and that's not the, that's not the amplitude of that oscillation. So, so there's a, uh, a uh, drift problem as well. So here are just again to reiterate the, what we measure, current reversal, and if we do field reversal, we, we get the, the Hall voltage. All right, so we, we're going to propose a, a different way of doing the measurement. The different way is very similar to what we were doing before. It's just that we now replace the B field with a, a time-dependent ACB field. Okay? And we work in the quasi-static approximation. So we, we get a, a Hall voltage depends on time. And, and we just plug in B of T and V of T in, into the same equations. There, there, there's no other corrections at, at this point in the model. So now my Hall voltage has, has become a, a uh, AC voltage. 